Transylvania is a region of Romania adjacent to Moldova, and so naturally the cuisine is largely a matter of regional differences, just as in Italy with its many variations on similar dishes. And once again, there are significant differences between home cooking and restaurant cooking. This recipe for tokitura is a real meat lover's fantasy, and it's one of the classics from this region. What I'm showing you here is a hybrid version of the Transylvanian home and restaurant versions as explained in the annotations. One of the things I encourage you to do, especially in my cookbook where I give you lots of directions, is to dry your own peppers. Now, usually I'm talking about a different kind of pepper. These are these gigantic Romanian peppers. They're like the same weight as a, as a bell pepper, but they're, they're different. Now, after you dry these in the oven overnight, you get something that looks like this. This is the kind of paprika you want to end up with. It has rich, dark overtones. Of, it smells like chocolate and almonds and, and uh, sun-dried tomatoes. Of course, it's not any of those things. It's just the peppers that have been slowly roasted in the oven and, uh, and ground up. But this is the magic to the dish. I've also got some uh, the cherry tomatoes, the uh, scallions that have been cut up. This is a lightly smoked pork sausage that has rice in it. This is the authentic kind that you want to use for it, but honestly, it really won't matter. You can use any lightly smoked pork sausage, it'll be okay. Uh, here's the bacon. I'm going to cut this into some slightly smaller pieces. We still want to have big pieces in this. Uh, I got one clove of garlic. We're going to we're going to add more garlic later. We're making layers of flavor. Not necessarily the way it would have been done in Transylvania by home cooks. They tend to throw everything in a pot and and just add the garlic at the end. And and but, but this is this is a little bit more sophisticated. It's a restaurant method. Um, also. <laughs> Usually, you would use fatty pork neck for this because you want that grease, that, that fat that runs off of the pork um, to be the kind of sauce for the dish. I'm not going to do that. I, it's, it's too heavy for most Westerners. So I'm using uh, pork tenderloin here. Uh, it won't be nearly as fatty. If you like that, then just swap this out for the, the fatty pork neck. And then the other ingredient, smoked pork ribs. I'm buying, I bought these because you can't get that smokehouse flavor from a stovetop smoker and I don't have a, a smokehouse to make real ribs. But they are smoked, they are pork ribs, by the time this is done cooking for several hours these will be tender. You can leave the pork ribs out completely if you want it, it'll still be a great dish. Okay, we have the pan heating. Now the other thing you need is either some rendered pork fat or vegetable oil or in my case I'm actually using duck fat because I have it. I have it on hand and uh, it's always nice. It adds a little bit of richness to it, but you can certainly use vegetable oil for this. It would be fine. And uh, they would use rendered pork fat. That would be the authentic thing to use. So you're going to heat this up a little bit. Now the bacon, I just cut into four pieces, about 30 grams each. We begin cooking this. We want to render out some of the fat from the bacon. And about seven or eight minutes later, if you didn't start out with rendered pork fat in there, you certainly got some now. Now, I'm going to put all that lovely ground chili in there. Let's saute this for just a few seconds. Just want to make sure really that the, that the paprika, I call it chili, I want to make sure that the paprika is evenly wet with the, with the fat. Now we're putting the pork tenderloin in and we want to cook this quite well. We want to make sure that the tenderloin is well, well seasoned with that paprika. And the heat is still on three. Out of one to ten it's on three. So we're doing this fairly slowly at first. After about three minutes here Started. Now I'm going to add uh, about half of those scallions and all of the cherry tomatoes. And we're going to cook this um, pork tenderloin, or what would be the, the fatty pork neck, until these tomatoes begin to soften. We really want to get some flavor on this. I'm going to turn up the heat now from three to five. It's on medium now, and we're going to we're going to let this cook 
a few minutes before we add any more ingredients to it. Here's what it looks like about uh, eight, nine minutes later. I'm now going to add that one clove of garlic, roughly chopped, and the sausage. You have to be careful you don't break up the sausage now, of course. And uh, we're going to cook it a little bit more. Still heats on number five, medium. We're going to start getting the sausage infused into the dish. Five more minutes have passed. Now, uh, as is so often the case in Russia, you never know what to expect. When I got these ribs out, I realized nobody had bothered to cut the chine bone. <laughs> you, usually, you get ribs; the chine bone's already been cut, so you can you can split these apart. I had to take a hacksaw to these to get them to get them to come apart. <laughs> yeah, Russian butchery. It's uh, it's just you know class by itself. So. Anyway, I'm putting these ribs in, and uh, let's get them down in there. These are basically going to boil. Now that we've got the ribs in with the rest of it, we're going to start adding water. I added uh, about a liter of water to this, and I'm going to try to make sure that it's as submerged as possible. You want, you want enough water to, to cover it. Okay, liquid's over the top now. We're going to put a lid on it, uh, partially covered, still a crack here, and let this go for about an hour. Bring it up to a simmer and let it boil for about an hour, partially covered. And during this time, every 10 or 15 minutes, lift the lid, agitate the contents just a little bit, Keep it, it, you know, it's, it's a good simmer. It's a good healthy simmer, but it's not boiling over either. I got it on, right now it's on uh, 4 out of 1 to 10. And through the magic of video editing, it's been about an hour and 15 minutes now. I'm going to take the lid off now, stir this around. I'm going to increase the heat just a little bit because when you take the lid off, it, <laughs> the heat can escape out the top. So it starts cooling down. So I'm, I'm going to go up to uh, about just under five. We're going to begin the reduction now. Uh, get this nice and thick. Uh, this is about uh, 20 minutes later now. This is simmering away nicely. We want to get this nice and thick. It's going to take a while. And uh, if you pick this up and taste it, you'll see there's a lot of fat and grease in it. It's actually a good thing because it's going to keep the tenderloin nice and tender because that doesn't have much fat in it. This continues to simmer away and you can see that the liquid is reducing. It's slowly getting thicker. Now we're going to begin making the polenta. When the water is boiling, begin whisking it. It's a very simple operation. And you don't worry about adding salt in this case because we're going to be adding that Romano cheese, which is plenty salty. And I've got this on a medium heat right now, number five out of one to ten. You know, whisk it for a minute or so, it'll start to thicken up. After just a couple of minutes, it begins to thicken up. So you can add the cheese to it. Again, this is not the traditional way of doing it. You would use a different cheese and you melt it over the top of it. But this is nice, works well. I'm going to turn the heat way down now because we just want to cook this all the way through. We don't want it to start splattering all over the place. It's been about an hour and a half now since I took the lid off of this, about two and a half hours in all, and uh, we're going to add the rest of the garlic to this, quite a lot of garlic, but remember this is Transylvania, we have to keep those vampires away. So, we're going to cook this a little bit more with all this garlic in it, it's starting to get real soft now. You can see that the meat meat's starting to actually break up here as I, as I cook it, so I'm going to have to be 
kind of careful so I don't turn it into turn it into a one giant sludgy pool. <laughs> this is also about the time we're going to add the rest of those scallions, green onions into it. Uh, again, be careful as you stir this around. Now it's it's very very soft. <laughs> In fact, there's a bone that just came free completely. That's okay. It's the sort of dish you don't have to worry about it too much. It's uh, it's going to be presented around the polenta. So it, if it's broken up a little bit, it's okay. But you don't want it into a complete mess. And a little bit later, this is starting to get quite thick. And uh, I'm going to add that 90 mils of white wine now. And this is now on the final reduction. And again, you can be careful because it, it'll break. It'll break up into tiny little pieces now if you're not careful. Meanwhile, the other side of the stove, polenta is nice and thick now. Now, ordinarily with polenta you would add some butter to this, <laughs> but this pork is plenty greasy. You do not need any butter added to this. Um, it will be just fine as it is. Just let it slowly cook just a little bit more. And when it's almost completely dry, it's ready. And as the final authentic touch, I'm going to put an egg on top. I'm going to put a lid over this to cook it evenly on the top. If you like my videos, look for my cookbook, now available through Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and other internet bookseller sites. Also look for my cocktail book, Cocktails of the South Pacific and Beyond, Advanced Mixology, available through Amazon online.